Thanks for the support as a channel member, Bow Tiger. You're not even going to give me a clue before everyone else finds out. We're doing a transfer window. I need a rough idea of how much I'm going to get to spend. Seven figures? You gave me seven figures last summer. Hello and welcome to part 58 of Homegrown. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our season review and transfer special at the end of the first season where we don't have a trophy or a promotion or anything. It feels so sad. We didn't get promoted and we are we're going to go up next year. I've decided. So let's have a look through the season review stuff. Um, starting off with the new arrivals. I think this has probably been our best year for transfers since that year. We got Danny Pritchard and a couple of others who all came in together, I think. There's players who've come in over the course of this season who are going to be a huge part of the future of this football club. Joe Barr, um, I definitely think, is somebody that we're going to be using a lot. Um, we got the uh, the young guy, Mackenzie, whatever his name is, the striker. Um, where is he? Mackenzie Fulton, Euron Hughes, who looks like he's picked up signing of the season. Ivanov, Zebi. I think there's a lot of players who've come in over the course of this season who are going to be Premier League players for us. And that is... Very exciting stuff. But there you go. Euron Hughes winning player of the year. And um, despite the long injury, not player of the year, signing of the season, despite missing a huge chunk of the season through injury, only starting 11 games in the end, he looked like he was going to be a nailed on starter until the injury. And then Renan kind of took his spot. But it, it all begins again next season. He might end up coming back in the team on the wing and Renan might go up front and who knows what we'll end up doing. But this is the summary of our season. So we finished ninth and we were supposed to battle bravely against relegation. So Mrs. Weirmouth, happy as usual. This is exciting. Our average home attendance, 83% of our capacity. So you would think at some point in the near future, um, we might be able to expand the stadium. We certainly need to before we hit the ball. Not necessarily before we hit the Premier League, but when we hit the Premier League. Jessup finished as our top scorer on 21 goals. We had that great FA Cup run as well, leading to the quarterfinal against Manchester United that gave us all of the pennies, which was very handy. We had some very fancy results along the way too, which is very nice. Um, and then this is the uh, the finances side of things, which was depressing for a lot of the season, but then we fixed it by going to Manchester United. Um, so we our broadcast revenue for the season went up from half a million to nearly three million um, what it doesn't show on there is gate receipts, which is a little bit odd because we took in a huge amount of money from the gate receipts playing Manchester United. Uh, but everything everything is up. Apart from sponsorships, which haven't changed, which is a weird one, everything else is up massively. Long may that continue. Um, we're starting to shift a few more shirts. Nearly a 1,000 shirts sold. Jessup selling more shirts than anybody. And I love the fact that Danny Pritchard's still selling shirts, even though he doesn't ever start for us anymore. Cult hero Danny Pritchard. Um, and this was our team of the year. Williams in goal, about for of Hall, Charles Davies and Brewerton, uh, Curry and Hodgkinson in midfield, Hamilton and Renan with Jessup and Cannon up front. That looks about right. Obviously, we're 90% sure we're losing Kieran Hodgkinson this summer, unless Mrs. Weirmouth gives me £10 million to spend and we can go and buy him permanently, which might not even be enough. I don't know what Fulham's plan is for him, but uh, I suspect we're not going to get him on loan again this coming season. We have got Nathan Curry tied down to another. In fact, I keep saying that. I think we have got him on loan again, haven't we? I think we've decided that we have, and I keep saying that we haven't. I need to double check this because I can't remember from one video to the next whether he's on loan again with us. Um, I won Manager of the Year, and these were our awards. So Jessup won Fans Player of the Year and Young Player of the Year, um, taking both of Harrison Davies' usual awards. Um, Euron Hughes signing of the season, goal of the season went to Ivanov, top scorer and most assists to Tommy Jessup and most man of the match awards and highest average rating. Fair to say, Tommy Jessup has had a good season um, and we've set some club records as well. Um, so Harrison Davies extending his own record for most appearances, 226 matches in a home shirt. Now Micah Beerith, also extending his own record as all-time top scorer. He's now on 90 goals. Joe Barr is our new record signing at 480,000. And Troy Cannon now has the fastest goal in home history at 26 seconds. We need to have a look at both Tommy Jessup and um, and Kieran Hodgkinson. Let's start with Hodgkinson. He is on loan until the end of next season. I don't know why for the last two episodes I've been convinced that he's not. I knew he was. Now we know for sure that he was. But we need to have a proper look at Tommy Jessup because he has just had a fantastic season for us. Wanted by crew, he's obviously not going there. 
He's been with us four years now. Took a little bit of a while to get into the team up front. Played his first couple of seasons out on the wing. But since moving to a striker for us, he is not only a goal scorer, but he's an assist machine as well. 28 goal contributions down in League One at 7.44. Uh, 31 goal contributions in 42 games in the Championship with an average rating of 7.4. Um, he is going to be a superstar for us for a long time to come. It's a shame for the likes of Troy Cannon, but Tommy Jessup is our man now up front. He is our striker and he won't... I mean, I wouldn't necessarily expect him to go and break Beeriff's all-time goalscorer record, but then I didn't expect him to get 21 league goals this year either at a goal every other game. Tommy Jessup has fully arrived. And the Kieran Hodgkinson news, it feels like a new signing because I was so convinced, even in yesterday's episode, so convinced he was playing his last game for the club, even though you lot all knew and were probably telling me in the comments, Kev, you told us two days ago you did ex you'd extended the loan. What are you talking about? Right, let's see what budgets we've got out of Mrs. Wilmoth. In fact, before that, we've got the all-time best 11. So, Captain Cartwheel, Oliver Wright, still in goal for the all-time best 11. He went to West Brom last summer and actually played seven games for West Brom in the Championship but did concede 15 goals. Bless his cotton socks. He's not very good, is he? Um, a back four of Bachelorette Pateta, who likely is going to be recalled by Blackpool this summer, I think. It's a shame, but I think his time with us is done. Shea Charles, Harrison Davies, Matty Brewett, and the rest of the back four makes sense. Slam Dunk, still in there on the left wing. He is now a free agent. Um, he's not a, He's not a, uh, got a staff profile, though, so I think Slam Dunk is probably done. As we've probably seen the last of Slam Dunk. Hamilton, Curry, and Whitaker in midfield. And um, Whitaker's another one who I think might be getting to the point where his time might be up. He's 24 years old. Um, he never really established himself as a regular starter. His number of appearances has drifted off and off as the years have gone on. He only started five games for us this year, only scored once. He doesn't get anywhere near the team on the right wing because he's got Renan and he's got Hughes ahead of him and Hamilton ahead of him. Um, Jessup even would be ahead of him in the pecking order there and up front. He's the eighth best striker at the club. I think Terrell Whitaker probably leaves this summer, which is a shame that he never really got the opportunity that Jessup did get. Jessup's now in as our um, starting striker alongside Henry Barton, who has, as we know, retired. Right, budgets. Budgets are incoming. We need big ones, please, Mrs. Wearmouth. I mean... They're not very big, are they? We've not had a wage budget increase. And we've not really been given much in the way of spendsies either. Yes, this is still bad. I still think there's more money coming in this summer. I don't think we're going to be sat here all summer on a £1.2 million overdraft. I think there's money due to come in. I'm just not sure when it comes and how much it is. We might be able to squeeze some more money out of her as the, the pre-season goes on. To be fair, we bought a lot of our players earlier on in January, so we probably weren't going to spend big anyway. And we might end up being forced to sell a player yet. Who knows, Renan or... I guess Renan would be the one who's most likely to go. Um, but goals for this coming season, Mrs. Wormuth looking for a mid-table finish and working towards repairing the club's financial damage. So that's her goal for the next five years now. Establish ourselves in the Championship and make the club so that it can survive and sustain itself financially, which, I mean, it's very sensible goals for a club this size. We know different, though. We want the Premier League. Our team leaders are Davies, Beerith, and Nathan Curry. Should all be here next year. Beerith starting to fall down the pecking order, but I think he's probably got one season with us left in him just yet. End of season team meeting. We'll just tell the boys that we want a mid-table finish. That seems fair. Um, they all seem happy with that, which is... Excellent. We're not going to make any promises because we have no idea what we're going to do transfer-wise. It really does come down to what kids we find. We can't really plan it in advance with a club like this. But this is what the team looks like at the start of the summer. Knowing that the loans are all staying, although Bachelorette Pateta might yet to depart, if we filter this to three-star ability just to see what we've got in each position, up front we've got oodles of strength in depth. Hodgkinson, Jessup, Curry, Renan, Beerif, Cannon... All three star or more up front. I mean, Curry, I would definitely not consider a striker. Hodgkinson was playing there a little bit towards the end of the season, no. Um, we know Renan was playing out wide, uh, but I, I don't know. I wonder if his long-term future might be up front. Probably not with the strength and depth that we've got there, but we certainly don't need to strengthen up front. 
um, out wide. Um, Jessup would be our best left winger, but he is a striker for us now, definitely. So although he's the best winger on either side, we can kind of disregard him. Um, Hamilton and Renan would continue as our starters based on what we know from there. Although I'd like to get Renan moved over to the left-hand side so that we can maybe play Hughes a little bit more on this side. You've got Zebby knocking around the place. Whitaker's still a two and a half star player. I mean, he's, he's a decent squad option. I just don't see him getting game time and he'll get upset quick. Um, in midfield, Hodgkinson, although we kind of consider him a striker now, Curry and Bandera, um, it's definitely an area we need to strengthen because once we get beyond Bandera, Hamilton is a winger, Campbell's a centre-back. We could really do with a top quality centre-back appearing this summer. Um, if we look at the defence, left-back, um, we know Andy Hall is the man. Campbell can play there too. Bacharet Piteta, if he doesn't get recalled, I'd love to have him as Hall's backup. I just don't think Blackpool are going to be that into us loaning a player and only using him as a backup player. At centre-back, Davies, Charles and Campbell are all great. We know we've got Joe Barr as well, who came in last summer who's still, or last January and is still very young. Hall and Brewerton can both play there as well. Right-back, don't expect Curry to play there. Brewerton is our right-back. And I, part of me thinks, I did talk about this in one of the previous videos, part of me wonders if Euron Hughes could be turned into a Kev-style wing-back. He's a natural wing-back that can't play full-back. He can't tackle, but since when was that important for a full-back in one of my teams? And then in goal, we've got Alex Williams. And if he goes, we've got we've got a big problem because there's nobody behind him. And he is wanted by some big clubs. So that could be an absolute disaster this summer if Alex Williams leaves. In fact, we've got a trigger extension clause thing on there. So I'm not going to mess with his contract. If we get an offer that Mrs. Williams accepts, we can wriggle out of one. I don't know if we can wriggle out of any more beyond that, though. And um, Renan does have a release clause at seven and a half million pounds. And for me to let him go, the clause has to be hit. And again, we've got the get out of jail three card that we can use once. It just depends how persistent clubs are going to be over the summer. So the plan now, as ever, renew some contracts, get through to the 1st of July and see if we can pick up any more freebies. All right, I'm hoping this next batch of emails is the money I was expecting. Um, apparently we made a profit, which is remarkable. Yeah, avoided a tax hit because we made a loss. The commercial summary we've already seen. Um, scouting budgets, we don't, we don't have one. Um, we've got 77k. Oh, my word. Right, we need to just bump a little bit more into that. Um, and then we're getting a cash injection from Mrs. Wearmouth. Please be a lot of money, Mrs. Wearmouth. We need it. Oh, she's brilliant. What a, what a wonderful woman. We're now back in the black. Probably not for very long. The projection still looks miserable. Um, the prize money and TV money and stuff that I was expecting, I guess, comes over the course of the season rather than as an end of season lump sum like it does in the Premier League, which does, I mean, it does pose the odd problem. Um, why is there nothing? Are we officially in next season now? Because there's nothing on this season. What am I looking for? Right, TV. So yeah, we did get three million pounds of TV revenue last season. So we not get we're not getting it separately. We can't afford to be at this level. We need a bigger ground and more fans. Everybody needs to bring a friend to our next game. I knew there'd be money. Here's the money. Four point eight two million pounds. Just as well because renewing contracts has put us way over the wage budget. So I need to go cap in hand to Mrs. Wearmouth. All the transfer budget has now been converted into wage budget and I'm still over the budgets. So that needs fixing, but we've got money again. Huzzah! Um, we've also renewed some very important contracts. Um, we've given Alex Williams a longer contract on more money that still has the extension. Renan, we've managed to remove his £7.5 million pound, uh, release clause and replace it with a £20 million pound release clause. Williams has been linked in the media with an eight and a half million pound move to West Brom. Um, so it looks like we're finally living in a world of proper transfer fees, which if this was a normal save would be great because we could sell one of them, reinvest the money and be laughing. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a little bit harder to do in our situation, but I mean, here's someone who's good. Look, 18 years old would cost us a hundred grand, but has five star potential. This is the sort of player we're going to continue to scout. So if we do happen to sell somebody, we can, we've got a bunch of players that we can go and bring in and buy. Realistically, though, until that until that happens, we can't bring anybody in for the rest of the summer because we've already maxed out our wage budget, renewing contracts. I mean, it's, it's a plan. We have made it through to transfer deadline day being open day. 
10th of June. It needs a better name, name than that, but we've brought, got our two young Premier League youngsters in. Uh, Daniel Onyango is an 18-year-old right winger who came in from Manchester City. These uh, the, the, the quality of these is slipping. He's potential to be a League Two striker in the future. I think we might be done doing this now. Um, Jack Roberts, 18-year-old. Again, three-star potential. He's in from Arsenal. Um, yeah, neither, neither of them are that special, are they? Hopefully, they're going to be players who... At least we can make a little bit of money on selling them on, getting loan fees for them, that kind of thing. But I think we have officially now at the point where we're not getting Premier League free transfer youngsters anymore. And we need to focus on, I guess we're going to have to actually start selling a few of them so we can reinvest money into buying. I'm um, talking of selling. We have sold Terrell Whitaker. Um, he's gone to Blackpool for £105,000. He's been a very good servant, came in in the Southern Premier League, Played over 180 games for the club over six years. But he was 24 and he he was done. So cash in while we can. Get a little bit of money in the bank for him. There's still a few more contracts going through. Um, <laughs> we, we need to just keep pumping any money we get back into wages because we are so, so far short of our wage budget at the moment. And um, now we just wait and see, really, if we get big offers in for either of our two hot prospects it's going to take eight and a half million to get Williams it's going to take 23 million to get Renan and then we'll take it from there first of July here we come well at least this means theoretically our days of accepting pathetic fees have gone and we're turning it down but it is nice to have got a one million pound plus offer for Harrison Davies after all the times he nearly left for five grand over the years I'm all of a sudden Feeling a little bit better about how this summer might end up going. We've had a little bit of a clear out as we approach the 1st of July. Um, we have, if we go back to the end of last season, I don't know why it doesn't tick over properly. But as well as Whitaker leaving, uh, Wayne Hoyt has left. He's gone to York. He's one of many that came in and never really worked out. He's People say Kev, the, uh, AI doesn't do Kev loans. There you go. Loan into a permanent transfer. Wayne Hoyt's gone to uh, York. Uh, Matt Muir's gone to Bath. Um, ah, interesting, where he was on loan before. Uh, Jason Mason, despite having a fantastic name, has gone to Dulwich Hamlet, again, making his loan permanent. Um, and we've also loaned a couple of more of them out as well. And one more player has come in, which is Reese Hill, who is a four-star potential centre-back who can also play right back. He's only five foot nine, so he still thinks he's a centre-back. Bless him. Five foot nine with six heading. And we're going to have the tough conversation soon where we explain to Reese Hill that he's a right back and he'll just have to like it. He needs to learn to cross, though. A great signing. Really great signing. Stop signing Premier League youngsters. Well, we've made it to the 1st of July. So far, nobody has left, which is definitely good news. Or well, nobody significant has left anyway. Um, <laughs> how? Just, just how? That must be promotion increase. I, don't, I genuinely don't understand how that's just gone up to that. That's absolutely mad. We need money. Um, hopefully Mrs. Wearmouth won't check the books anytime soon. Let's look at the club vision. Well, and she's disappointed that we're not playing direct football either. We uh, and we need a good season ahead of us this year. We need some money. We've arranged a Wearmouth Cup to try and bring some money in. Name it after her. She'll be happy. And um, we're just trying to arrange some loans for players to go out as well. A um, couple of the players who were just on the fringes last year but could do with game time for development. So Mackenzie Fulton is going out on loan for the season. Zebby should be going out on season as well. Uh, on on season. On loan for the season too. And um, And then we're just kind of waiting to see what happens for the rest of the summer. Um, we, I mean, I've had a, a little look at what the director of football can offer. They're not offering anybody under 18, so I'm not going to bother going through a whole lot of those. We've got a few players on our shortlist who have now been released from contracts. If we just have a look at who's unattached, there's a few that we're going to bring in on trial. Um, not masses of them, and I'm not massively confident about any of them based on the free transfers we've been bringing in so far. Um, I think the next proper signing we make is going to have to be a permanent signing. And I don't think it's going to be this summer unless we sell Renan or Williams, which I think is probably counterproductive. Although we do get a big tick there if we sell Renan for a profit after bringing him in for nothing. Hmm. 
Luckily, boys and girls, I don't follow my own advice. We've continued bringing in trials and free transfers, and I think we've got. got I think we've got. I cannot speak in this video. Goodness me! Oh, I think I've got. Oh my word! I think I've got four good ones, or three, three good ones, and one that might get there. Um, Evan Eastham, Eastham, Eastham is an eighteen-year-old striker. Um, one and a half star current ability, three and a half star potential ability. He's in from Spurs. Uh, Pete Dewhurst is good. He's a defensive midfielder or striker. Of course, he's natural in both of those positions. Why wouldn't he be? Eventually, he's going to be a central midfielder. He just doesn't know it yet. Um, he's a two-star current ability, four and a half star potential ability. Um, so should be a good, solid uh, championship player at some point. Was at Chelsea, then Portsmouth, now with us. Um, we've then got Ian McLean who's an 18-year-old Scottish right-back, two-star current ability, five-star potential ability, another one of our future Premier League players. It says championship. We know he's going to be a Premier League player. Um, he's at, he was at St. Johnston previously and has SPL experience at only 18 years old. Um, and then lastly, Majed Al-Zarani um, is an 18-year-old Saudi striker who can play out wide on either wing. We've got someone interested in it. Oh, it's a loan interest. That makes more sense. One-and-a-half-star current ability, four-and-a-half-star potential ability, um, another one who's going to be a solid championship player. He is in via Sheffield United. While all that's been going on, um, we've sold one of our legends. Marcus Muir um, has now left the club. He's gone to Walsall for £105,000. Um, just bringing in a little bit more cash. Little dribbles of cash here and there as well. Uh, Joseph Suleiman has gone out as well. Just again we brought him in for free loaned him out for a long time and then sold him for a little bit of cash which is nice uh, John van der Laan does still exist he's now 23 years old he's rejoined Aldershot for the third year in a row on loan three year loans don't happen yes they do here's another example of one um, he's actually got Aldershot on his favoured personnel list as well and um, he is considered still a three and a half star potential player this is his year if he's going to be a championship quality player and get into our team he has to be in our first team squad next season. If he's not, we have to finally give up on him, which would be a real shame. Um, on As well as all of that, we've also released one of our Name in the Game channel members, Russ Eddy, um, who did come through with five-star potential, um, but he came through with five-star potential in the conference and just hasn't progressed at the same rate we have. He's gone out on a free transfer. Um, some, I'm sure someone will pick him up. He's a Welsh under-19 international, but we will check on him again at some point. But that, I think, is probably going to be it. For transfers, it's only the 9th of July, so there's still the possibility that somebody could leave. Um, we've brought in new players, but by bringing, by sending others out, we are slowly but surely getting our wage spend down and closer to what the wage budget is. There's still £3 million in the bank. The season starts in three weeks. We are literally just going to sit here for three weeks, hoping we don't get a big offer for one of our stars, because I will be happy going to the new season with this squad. Well, this wage situation means for the first time in this save, I think, I'm going to have to do some of my old shenanigans and take these budgets down so that we can um so that we can push some more money into transfer budget. So leaving the uh, leaving the bonuses as they are, we've got no transfer budget, dropping them down there gives us 800,000 now in transfer budget, which should give us a big old chunk towards that wage budget. We're still not quite there. We're an awful lot closer than we were, though. No bonuses, everybody, but at least you get paid most weeks. You'll be fine. And through some rigorous budget manipulation and loaning out lots of fringe players, we have managed to get our wage uh, wage total back under the new wage budget. I mean, it's nowhere near the original wage budget we were set, but it's below the wage budget we have now by the end of the summer. Um, and that is the end of the transfer window. It's now time for our first game of the new season, which of course will be in tomorrow's episode. Um, you can see that we've loaned out quite a few more of the fringe players there. I know I'm going to get questions about the loans of particularly Mackenzie Fulton, um, Tommaso Zebi. They're probably going to be the big ones. Uh, maybe even Jonathan Akani. They're players who are close to the first team squad, but We've got to think in terms of, of development. We've got, what is this, a 23, 20, a 24 man first team squad. Fulton, for example, will be much better served heading out and getting some game time elsewhere rather than sitting on our bench for the next year when we could have Danny Pritchard sat on our bench. You can see he was listed. There's a few of these who are still listed for loan. We probably want one more of them to go. I'm not that fussed which one it is, but I have a bee in my bonnet about a 23 man squad. So we'll get this down to 23 probably, loan one more out and then 
then cut off the loans. Um, and if it gets to January and we're running out of players, um, we've got loads of loans that we can recall and draft some players back in again. And we've also still got quite a lot of players just sat in the under 23s who can come up into the first team squad if they need to as well. Some names that, I mean, someone like Chaput, who's been here ages. I mean, he's years he's been here, but he's not out on loan yet this year. So if needs be, he can come in and get some game time. So I'm pretty, pretty confident that the squad, the first team squad that we've got is good enough to go again and do what we did last season and maybe go one better. The media this time around are predicting us to finish 19th. We predicted 23rd last time. We ended up finishing ninth. If we can finish in the playoffs this year, that would be super. Um, but we're certainly getting closer and closer to a squad and a team that can get promoted to the Premier League. Everyone's a year older than they were this time last year, believe it or not. Um, and I think that is a very good side. Um, and it'll be even better once Renan is fit and he can come back into it as well. But he picked up a little bit of a knock pre-season, so he's not going to be playing in the first game up tomorrow. But good team, that. And also, we've got Connor Roberts back, who is one of the ones who did go out on loan last season and is now back in and around the squad. And as a five-star potential youngster, it's time for him to step up and hopefully be this season's Renan and burst into the team early on as an 18-year-old and show us how awesome he is. If we can get one, two new 18-year-olds drafting into the team each year. Last year, I guess you'd look at Williams and Renan as the two 18-year-olds who burst in. If this year we can get Roberts and, I don't know, Roberts and Ivanov, if they can become regular starters this season, then that seems to me like some pretty good squad development. Let's get promoted this year, shall we? If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.